Hello and welcome back to another Computer Sluggish tutorial. Before we get started, have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? If not, be sure to click on the big red subscribe button on my main page. And once you have done this, don't forget to click on that bell to be the first to get notified when I upload a new video. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the top 5 best Android emulators for Windows and to kick things off, the best Android emulator for Windows when playing PUBG Mobile is Tencent Gaming Buddy. This emulator is currently in beta, but I have got to tell you, it is a fantastic emulator. This is what the emulator looks like. If I go to the top right hand corner, we can click on the menu button and go to settings. And this emulator offers hundreds of settings to tweak PUBG Mobile to make it play fantastic. As you can see, we actually have five rendering options. It also has three other options below rendering here. As you can see, we have render cache, we have enforced global render cache, prioritized dedicated GPU, and we also then have anti aliasing options here. We have close balance ultimate. We also have memory, we have auto, 512 meg, 768 meg, 1 gig, 1.5 gig, and 2 gig. On the processor, we can choose up to four cores, and for our resolution, we can go all the way up to 1920 by 1080 if you have a powerful graphics card. If you don't, then you can go all the way down to 1024 by 576. For the DPI, we can choose from minimum of 120 all the way up to 480. If we go onto the game option, we have a few more options here. We can change our resolution to an amazing 2K, but it does recommend that you have a GTX 1060 or higher. We can also change the display quality to HD. Like I said at the start, this is the best emulator you can get for Windows to play PUBG Mobile. But unfortunately, you cannot play any other Android games on this emulator, and that is why this emulator is in fifth place and in fourth place we have andy i don't know what it is about this emulator but i just find it's very old-fashioned and it just annoys me setting it up i just always seem to get a lot of errors like just a minute ago when i tried to launch it i just had a black screen and i've had to uninstall andy and reinstall it again and now that I have actually got Andy open, it's now doing a load of updates, which I don't want it to do. I mean, why is it updating maps? I'm not going to use apps on this emulator. It just, it does have a few things that do frustrate me. But when it comes to actually playing the games, it does play the games pretty good when you do manage to get them to work. Let's just quickly have a look at a few of the settings it has to offer before opening up Color Road. I have just opened up my start menu to open up the Andy launcher and as you can see it is just installing loads of unnecessary apps which I do not want to have installed. We've got maps on there, we've got Google text to speech engine, it's installed Gboard. I really don't want any of this to be installed. Let's go ahead now and open up Andy Launcher because to change the settings for this emulator you do have to do them before launching Andy which can be pretty annoying as well. Here are a few of the settings it does have to offer. As you can see we can change our resolution down here and we have a few settings here. If we go back and go to VM options we can change our CPU here. We can also change our RAM and our network mode. But that is about it when it comes to the settings. Like I did say, Andy Emulator is pretty old fashioned. Let's go ahead now and open up the game. And there we go. We have now got Color Road on my screen. And like I said, it is playing extremely well. If you are using a old computer, then I definitely do recommend you give Andy Emulator a try, as I do believe it's more focused for the old school computers, especially computers running Windows XP or Windows 7. And in third place, we have LD Player. I actually do like this emulator. I do think it has a great future ahead as long as they carry on doing a lot of updates for it and just keep improving the performance. It does have a lot to offer. 
On the right hand side here, as you can see, we've got all our shortcuts. We have our keyboard mapping up the top here. We then have our volume buttons. We also have our virtual GPS button here and we can install APKs. If we go to the top, we have our menu button. I'm just going to open up the settings and just show you a few of the settings it has to offer. As you can see, we have our resolution. We have our CPU. We can go up to four cores there. We have our memory, which can actually go up to a amazing eight gig. I have not seen this in many emulators. In fact, I can't actually think of one off the top of my head that actually supports this option. And I've not used it yet, but I will do a video on the 8 gig of memory testing our PUBG Mobile or something like that that actually requires a lot of memory. If we go to the left hand side, we have our basic settings, which you can see we have auto rotate, we have root permission, which is nice and easy to root the emulator. We also have properties, we've got our network, shortcuts and a few game settings. And in there, as you can see, we have a few settings for PUBG Mobile, which is great if you really are into the PUBG Mobile game. I'm now going to go ahead and quickly launch this game color road and just see how well it plays if i click start i've just got to hold down my mouse and try and go through the correct color and straight away this is actually running nice and smooth and as you can see oh i went totally wrong there but as you can see it did detect that i had to use the mouse to control the ball which is great because i hate having to mess around with key mapping and in second place, we have blue stacks. And as you all know, I have always been a huge fan of blue stacks. It has always been my favorite Android emulator. It is the one that I always recommend everyone to go to. But for some reason, the last few weeks, I just, it's, I've not really been enjoying blue stacks anymore. I find it has too much advertisement. When you load in, it takes longer to load, and then it keeps popping up with this Pika world, which annoys me a lot as well, and it has Pika points. I just find they're going a bit off track these days with Bluestacks. That's just my opinion. It's still a really good emulator, and that's why it has come second place. All the games run extremely well. If we go to the top right hand corner, we have our menu button. I'm now going to open up the settings and just go through a few of the settings quickly with you. As you can see on the main screen here, we have our display settings. We've got our aspect ratio, our resolution, and we have our DPI. If we go across to engine, we have two options here. We have DirectX and OpenGL. CPU cores, we can choose up to eight cores. And for the memory, we can only choose up to 4 gig. We have our boss key here. And then we have our notifications. We have our preferences, backup and restore. And if we want to check for updates on Bluestacks, we have a button for that. And we have the about section. I'm now going to load up that color road and just see how well the game performs on blue stacks. As you can see, I do have it on another tab, which is one of the other reasons why I do like blue stacks, because you can have multiple tabs open of different Android apps. But unfortunately, it does reset the game or the app sometimes. For example, color road, I did just have it open on the menu and it's restarted the game. But anyway, let's go ahead and just see how well it plays. Maybe I will do a bit better than my last score just a minute ago. And that is absolutely running, wow, it's running fantastic, to be honest. It's really, really smooth. And this is one of those games that I think you will get very addicted to. And oh, that's not good at all. Comment below your best score on this game. I definitely am interested and I will definitely try and do better on the next Android emulator. But that is it for Bluestacks. Like I said, I do highly recommend you give it a go. But it is becoming a little bit bloated, like with a lot of bloatware, I find. And in first place, we have Nox Player. I did always like Nox Player, but I did used to find Bluestacks was just that little bit better. But times have changed, and I feel Nox Player is a much better Android emulator than Bluestacks 3. 
and that is why this emulator has now taken the crown. It is in first place. I find games are less laggy on Nox Player. I find the emulator actually boots up a lot faster than Blue Stacks. And I also find the games all launch a lot faster on Nox Player. It also comes with a lot of features, as you can see on the right hand side here. But it doesn't have all those annoying features like Bluestacks does, which actually slows down the emulator. If we go to the top right hand corner, we have our settings. And in here, we have a nice list of settings. For example, we can root this emulator at startup. In Bluestacks, you have to download a third-party program to actually root the emulator. If we now go across to Advanced Settings, we have a nice list here to help improve the performance of the emulator. We can change our performance settings from low to high or even put in a custom amount on the CPU and memory. We can change the startup resolution. We can also choose from a mobile phone tablet or our custom resolution. We can then change our graphics rendering mode from OpenGL to DirectX, and we can also change the frame settings. If we go to property settings, we have a few settings here. We then have our interface settings, which we can adjust, and our shortcut settings. I'm now going to go ahead and actually boot up Color Road, just to see how well this game plays in Nox Player. Right, fingers crossed I will actually do a bit better than I did in the last go and it's quite hard to talk whilst concentrating but yeah as you can see this game is running absolutely fantastic on this emulator there's no lag there's oh I should have had that but anyway I did beat my last score as I said I do highly recommend you give Nox Player a try it is a fantastic emulator even if you're using a old computer I find it runs games very very well and it has quite a lot of settings i hope this video did help if it did hit the like button below and subscribe for more computer sluggish tutorials also comment below let me know what your favorite emulator is